Put half a million people on a tiny island and what do you get? Realistically, a bunch of people struggling to find their identity, afraid to take risks and worried about what people will think or say. For the first ever episode of Growing Pains, we sat down with Chris and spoke about just that. We discussed how Malta's bubble affects us as youths and how we can overcome it. Guys, you should really watch this one. Phone, you had airplane mode, just shot on me, man. Or take it out. Go. Mela, guys, what we're going to be discussing today is something that I think we've all went through and I think most people watching could really resonate with. And it is living in Malta. So Malta, as we all know, is quite a small place, which obviously has its advantages when it comes to getting around, meeting friends. Um, so it does give you a certain amount of liberty. But then where that could also kind of turn negatively is how where everyone knows each other that doesn't really give you the freedom to explore because and then it's big enough for everyone to start kind of passing judgment at each other mm-hmm. and to talk shit yeah. about each other. So in what ways, to start things off, in what ways have you felt this growing up in Malta? Thank you for having me, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. Um, I think it's a problem that, like you said, everyone who lives in Malta has faced here or there. That said, I think there's ups to the downs as well, like mm. it has, like anything else, there's, there's good and bad to it. I would say there's more ups than downs to Malta being so small that everyone knows everyone, but that's, that mm. could just be me as well. Uh, quite frankly, I think there's more benefits than there are uh, deficits, I guess you could say, is purely subjective. Like mm. it, it, it relates to how you live your life in, in general. So if you're particularly bothered by what other people say, that's going to take a toll on you because everyone's going to say something eventually. Yeah. If you're not that bothered, which I, I think I fall in that category, you're going to be a bit more kind of liberal with what you do, maybe care less about judgment, do things mm-hmm. more so because you want to do them rather than what I, what's that person going to think when I do it or, or whatever. And I think you could be led to it by this matrix, I guess you could say, by, by mm-hmm. being programmed by living in Malta. But I would say it's, it's avoidable. Mm-hmm. But, but as to when I've experienced it, I think there were a few points where... I wouldn't say I was like dependent on other people's judgment, but you definitely feel it when something monumental mm-hmm. happens in your life, like when something that could potentially shake your future. Like I, when I left law, I was in law for a couple of years and I decided to quit. My dad always wanted, wanted me to be like a professionalist. And then at a the point I was like, now what? Uh-huh. You know, like mm-hmm. it wasn't for me. And I, and I was at a point where I wasn't just waiting for my dad's judgment, I was also waiting for the world's judgment. Mm-hmm. Like, so you feel like there's a spotlight on you, I feel like as soon as someone does something that's a bit different, like, oh, that yeah. everyone mm-hmm. has an opinion, that, everyone mm-hmm. has something that. to say. Even personally, it, it has affected me quite a bit. I agree with you in the sense that it also depends on the person and if you can take it a bit, because I agree, I, I like living a more time aware that it has its pros and cons, but I like the pros a lot, yeah. so mm, yeah, exactly. I'm aiming to stay here, Alyssa, but Anka, with the nature of my job, how I can get three hours, being on social media so much, I obviously get recognized when I go out work, and sometimes that's, yeah. how it's that nice, feel? it's nice, I love it, but mm. sometimes it gets me a bit like, like yeah. typo cool. self-conscious, sort like, of. Like every move is being watched, kind uh-huh, of. Typo yeah, typo the highest Yo, and how what is called Even mm-hmm. though probably in my head, I'm just everyone's just doing their own thing, to be and no one cares. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But obviously, this whole dynamic and the way Malta is and the way society is here, obviously, yeah. mm-hmm. does have an effect. Do you get recognized yet? Or not, so, not quite famous. So <laughs> I, I, I had gotten recognized one part I could really remember before I started doing things like being on the podcast, doing right. the lives and stuff like that. Before that, I got recognized once at, at the beer festival. And, and I found that to be really, really cool. I remember it was a, they recognized me from a poll segment of our favorite bands. And mine was Queen. And I was at the rock Boy, stage nice. at, at, at beer How festival. How good. So I this guy came this. up and I was like, not quite Queen. We know him, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And he, rec- he told me that he recognized me. Um, but now that I've been doing more on camera stuff, right. thank you, Zach. Um, <laughs> I've been being recognized a little bit more, right. like in particular hotspots like 
Big G, Big G's, Big G, Madonna, big I'm becoming a boomer. G. Dacă il Big G fa e mor rozaza. Big G's and stuff, I, I could notice like people recognizing mm-hmm. me from somewhere. You'll see like the those, those dirty looks, yeah. eh? I'm still, I'm still <laughs> at the phase where, where obviously I'm, I'm enjoying it more than anything, yeah. where it's like I feel recognition more than judgment. Um, mm. But that's because I haven't Good done point. anything weird yet. I feel like <laughs> the, the second, I'll, bro, give it, I'll give it a year. Maybe as as the, the, the second I say something, <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe yeah, on yeah, this yeah. podcast, and then, then people might start looking at me a bit differently. Yeah. But that's the nature of it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's normal. If I fuck oh, up, cool. I fuck up. And people recognize. But I like what you said earlier. Of, of it, it depends a lot on the mindset Mm -hmm. that you have. I I think we all go through a long period of our life when we're growing up, when we're going to school, where we care a lot about what people think. And Mm -hmm. some people manage to get over it by the time they're mid-20s, early 30s. There's no real time in particular, but some people get over it. And some people get stuck in that matrix, as as Mm -hmm. you said. You started your own brand, you started your own company, you left law to do it. what are each of the the obstacles you had to overcome in doing something like that? Uh, first and foremost, the biggest obstacle is always quite well, as cliche as it sounds. Yourself, like, mm-hmm. whatever it is, it's, whether word, it's perception bro. or doing things with your actual hands. Mm-hmm. Fucking the word. You <laughs> <laughs> scream sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 <laughs> that, that's my way of saying I agree entirely <laughs> with what you're okay, saying. Okay. Fucking word, bro. Um, but yeah, I mean obstacles. There were mostly checkpoints for me. Like mm. I, I knew that I, I feel like I predicted the obstacles quite well. You're of course, there were some things that that uh, happen to come up that you like have to learn or have to get mm-hmm. over. But the obstacles in in the sense of culture and mentality and people around you, mm. uh, it was strange because I never really felt judged because I never even considered what other people would think. Mm. I felt oh, like good. I felt like I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. Purely because I fell in love with the idea. I'm, I was married to the idea of Happy Pot from like day one. Mm. And literally nothing no one mm-hmm. could do or say or think would affect its outcome. Like uh-huh. I, I've made oh, it my I wish I was more like that, man. And everyone is, could like, learn a thing or two. In the room. sense, I am a bit tough, but yeah. mm. not as much as I'd like to be. Man, can't you live for a post for Instagram? I have to stay sending it to my friends. Oh, another is Yes, yes. <laughs> Like on us, like here, you know, it's Nivella, like okay, so what? Like, what? The is comments is like Bella. What is your <laughs> man? Like the fucking word. Malav uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shala, but it does get to me. I wish I was more like... Mm. I, I guess it's, it's Russell said this the other day. Russell's a colleague of ours, uh, Chris, and... and I, another one of our colleagues, Jazz, um, who's jazz, in the theater cool scene. Name. It is a cool name. Jazz in the theater scene. Jazz, yeah. jazz in the theater scene. Isn't nice. that dope? <laughs> nice. Um, and and she was alive. expressing <laughs> Iso, the anxiety that she gets on stage when people she knows are watching and, and stuff like that, and whether or not people would talk about her performances, mm. argument. And Russell, God bless his soul, he <laughs> said, um, but isn't that the reality of it? People are passing judgment and people are talking. Mm-hmm. Isn't of, that of the reality of, of it? In yeah, of, of well, in, in general, general, I think right. maybe there's a certain culture in, yeah. in like theater and the movies and stuff like that that's more tight knit that causes people to pass this competitive mm. judgment. Um, but I think in general, that brings me a lot of closure in the sense that I always feel, wow, well, I hope people aren't talking about this. I, I hope people aren't passing judgment about me. But the second you realize, hey, they are, mm. you start thinking about. What am I going to do about it? Right. How am I going to alter my perspective to stop this from limiting me? How am I going to alter my perspective to do what the fuck I want without anyone bothering me about it? Last I don't time. think it even has to limit you, though. In a sense, if you're aware, of, of course, there's downsides to thinking that your move, every move is being watched. Fair. Mm. But in a sense, if you're aware that to a certain extent uh, every move is being watched, then that drives you to make good moves. Mm-hmm. So I guess you could say... On the flip side, there is some value mm. in being in the limelight that you also hate. Because mm. in a sense, it, it, I say in a sense way too often. <laughs> <laughs> but in a sense, it makes you want to be better, I guess. Mm-hmm. Of course, then there's that added weight on your shoulders. Like, today I have to be better. Mm-hmm. I have to do better because other people are going to see it anyway. Mm-hmm. But I think people just stress too much. Man. Yes, <laughs> people we People just go about life and do whatever. Last time I was speaking didn't... to a friend of mine who's also, who also like posts a lot of content. Yeah. Like, and we were speaking about all of this and we were saying how sort of 
how weird it feels that like so many people see the content we put out or what if they mm. judge, what if they say this. And I told her, I told her, Tipo, but how do you feel about so many people like seeing your content? And she told me, but that's why I post it. Okay. I post it so that people okay. see it and I won't post it. And okay. So true, Tifa. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. That's, that's the, point. the point. That's literally the whole that's point. The We're point. making this podcast so that people watch and listen. We post yeah. so that people watch our, see our content. Uh, that's subscribe the whole to point. So when you think of it that yeah. way, very cost in the on but not in such a hobby way. Yeah, the on the flip side, however, because we're talking about people passing judgment, people passing comments, people giving criticism. That's one thing, and hate is a total other thing. Mm. There are mm. malicious keyboard warriors in the <laughs> world. Um, maybe sometimes we have fallen judgment, maybe when we're younger, maybe now, I don't know. Um, but I do feel like it's a problem all around the world. Maybe more that's slightly more amplified because we're a Small. tight-knit yeah. Catholic mm-hmm. country. So Love Island, for example. Oh. But I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I fell victim to the second they were like doing their intro videos. And kind of you like you get you're, you're ready, fully ready to judge these brave fucking Purely people. Purely to judge them. Man, yeah, that, that's exactly what it's I mean. ingrained they're, they're in us. They're brave. Brave. Yeah, as soon as you see someone like that, that's a bit different. My uh-huh. Lord, True. And True. where would we be in the world if there weren't brave people like that? I thought, I you, were spent... say, I thought you were going to say where would we be in the world without Love Island. Like, <laughs> we would be exactly where we are just without Love Island. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of You're that a fan? stuff. I'm, a, I'm, a, 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 I'm definitely you, a fan of that. You binge it? I binge it. I binge Ooh. it. Yes, hard. he's been obsessed for I binge it hard. I binge it hard. Ouch. But, but, and the thing that what I do like you get about from it, it what do I get from it? I, I get to to me. Look, at, at the end of the day, there is valuable content that that you can consume that will help you grow as a person. So, for example, I listen to a lot of bot- podcasts. I right. read books, and I do this and that. I feel like nine p.m., ten p.m. All right, it happens once every evening, so it kind of consumes consumes your mind to a certain extent. But sometimes you just need a bit of entertaining, entertainment, trash, yeah. TV, trash TV, and give me some of that. Yeah. And I think sometimes you just need to watch something that's not that deep. Yeah, cool. but don't you okay. don't you think that they're super brave for yeah, doing something? Like, sure. Knowing Malta's for dynamic, sure. like yeah, it takes them. so much guts, though. It does. No, I, I would never do that because it's for me the way I see it. It would be social suicide. Because mm. uh, this is the moment that you're in that limelight, mm. where the I feel like the okay we're gonna stick to Love Island because whatever. Ooh, but the yeah. point of the show is purely to simulate love, yeah, in its basest form. But knowing that love is what it is, it's such a deep thing. Mm. You can never fully replicate it, knowing that there are cameras on you. Yeah. So that goes back to our question earlier, like what would you do if you knew that the whole world was watching? Now mm-hmm. in this case, Malta is their whole world, all the contestants, mm-hmm. every single one that was on there. Most people will now recognize them from now. Yeah, who was so there, and there was like 150,000 viewers. Yeah, so that's and a lot all of ages. Viewers. It's like uh-huh. proper. You see, you can tell a lot man. But the last episode, yeah, before we get into that, I'm definitely like at a point of violent. You know, I'm flat out. I'm going to watch episodes. I'm going to watch episodes. I watched it. I watched it. I watched all the episodes. I watched all the episodes. My life, my life, bro. And my life takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of guts, man. But is it worth it? In the sense, if I like, didn't have pure love in your life, because I would not do it myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I struggle to find the, the value in it for them like mm. is it maybe brand deals or, 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 or I mean, that, that's that's you, I yes think but don't you think that those things will eventually subside like, so w- wouldn't there be a wave that eventually crashes in 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 Malta I mean the, the opportunities after Love Island um, are, are a little bit less but I think that real like getting yourself out there putting yourself in front of all those yeah. people and going through mm-hmm. that personal journey making the most yeah. personal decisions in front yeah, of a sea of people okay. fucking power to you man mm-hmm. that, that's that's the way I look at it but yeah. reading the comments it does upset me. People going yeah, after people's yeah, people appearances, are just, just as that, as that. And like the memes, man, the countless memes. Yeah. I, I admit, I laughed at a couple of them. Yeah, no. I mean, I was it to talk, but, <laughs> but then, then again, what, they're, they're real people. To talk, to but us. after yeah. a few seconds, they're like, yeah, as mm-hmm. This is me. Like, imagine this is like my cousin mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. my daughter or my, you know, people are so close to us. That's mm-hmm. another thing. Like elsewhere. In the UK, these people would be seen as celebrities. They already have record deals for or yeah. deals mm-hmm. with something, and, and those people are unattainable. Mm-hmm. In the sense, as a, as a regular pleb in going through society, you would never run into them in the street. Yeah. Here, you would go to the green grocer on the road, and chances exactly. are you're gonna run into mm-hmm. enough Dale or whoever uh-huh. one of them is. Yeah. You. 
Så jag kunde aldrig säga because they're so invested in the violin for mm. to admit them. Ja, det could be a thing. I, I But then again, power to you, bro. <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> um, my celebrity status is 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 weird here because there's there's a ceiling, man. Always. Mm. There's mm-hmm. always a ceiling, mm. and I think it's good. I yeah. think celebrities are overrated because. Yeah. Honestly, they're super overrated. Because <laughs> uh-huh. we're just normal it's... people, bro. Lara, for me, I can tell, I can, I can use it. This is one of the factors of knowing how ek besens a person is, <laughs> is whether or not they idolize someone. Like, you actually just feel like, oh, mm-hmm. Hannah yeah. Montana, yo, yo, Shahad. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo she, Shahad, like, she had her styles. Uh-huh. Okay, you have uh-huh. a shrine, but what does that give you? For sense, yeah. 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 Focus on yourself. I man. think, yeah, I think, I think you or, should enjoy or, the entertainment and not try emulate. Well, yeah, yeah, entertainment is fair. It's, it's yeah. all well and good, but mm-hmm. but there's a line. Yeah. yeah, and I think we all do that. We're all victim of that on social media in the sense that, like, if we see someone um, wearing something or, or or someone rocking something, um, then you're like, you, you could either go two ways about it, which is either you take inspiration from it or you and try to emulate them. For example, mm-hmm. um, in Kela, the negative side of it is is like. Ah, how shit you look! Kind of, mm-hmm. kind of wearing that. Purely out of something. Being vindictive. Yeah, yeah and, and and I think and a, sometimes a big it's part jealousy. Of it, yeah, yeah jealousy. That's it. And whatever. That's it. Sometimes but people it's fear change. That. People, people mm-hmm. hate change. Like the moment you step out of conformity, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. humans I are hardwired like to be comfortable and comfortable. I feel like in Malta, is especially consistency. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In Malta, especially definitely. being that the population yeah. is so small and everyone Look. knows everyone, mm-hmm. most people end up conforming. Yeah. Ease of as a theom tort in a sense, it's. It's almost. It depends on the definition of the tort, of course. In the sense, how aware are you that how big is the problem in general? Like the fact that people conform as to what they wear, how significant is it? Is it, does that, in an underlying way, signal that you are a sheep, that you are mm. part of the flock, or are you conforming on bigger things like? Get a nine to five, get a mm. loan, you know, travel once every two years, have a have a mortgage, have a kid, uh-huh. and then mm-hmm. you know, be s- sad for the rest of your life. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. conforming in that way is the no, deepest, no. most malevolent way you could uh-huh. conform. And I feel like the system kind of breeds that. Yes. Sense. No, I think yes. I think it it, yeah. it sets like, like the the Maltese culture and and the system itself sets us up um, to have quite a low ceiling as a society. Mm. So you look at, you mentioned comfort and how, how Malta as a place that the, the system, um, and humans in general, we're, yeah. we're wired to remain comfortable. Okay. Um, whereas animals, for example, they, they, they can't remain comfortable, but they always need to put themselves um, in risk, dangerous situations guess, yeah. and, and, and at risk. But I think because Malta fears change so much and we fear change so much that we are not ready to take that leap to become yeah. great. What is that leap to you? So that leap, for, for example, um, not to become great, but, but just a significant step I took in my personal yeah. life was starting a podcast with my brother. Mm-hmm. My brother and yes. I, Milan fans, absolute Serie A nerds bro <laughs> with like like every weekend dual screening it watching every single game nice. taking notes and discussing it on a on a podcast um and i'm not gonna lie when it came to starting it i was super 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 anxious about mm. it i'd get fucking clammy hands even my my heart is getting a bit a bit pumpity pump <laughs> right now thinking about thinking, the thinking about that, pump. that <laughs> step i had to take leave. madonna i'm gonna put this out to it's scary local people to the who ether don't, forever who don't want right. me to succeed and you're allowing people to say anything they want about your baby because exactly. your podcast is your baby now like exactly. Exactly. Well, that's the beauty of it yes yes 100 like, percent that's the beauty be, of it but it is scary be, W- would it be um, uh, fulfilling if you did it and you managed to do it, like I mentioned to the podcast, and you didn't feel the fear beforehand and you weren't did anxious what? about it beforehand, starting it up? Mm. So when I was starting the podcast, like I, like I said, I felt very anxious. And yeah. now I feel very rewarded from the fact that it's doing well and people like it and that it's successful, so on and so forth. Um, still a lot to grow, obviously. Oh, yeah. day, um, I feel like if I didn't have that fear, of judgment Mm -hmm. when setting it up, Mm -hmm. then actually setting it up and carrying it out and being successful through it wouldn't have brought me that joy and that fulfillment that it brought me now. So it's actually quite rewarding, the fear. Like It is rewarding, but I feel like you would get more out of just being so completely delusional. Mm. (laughs) The Lulu. Mm. The Lulu is the Salulu. (laughs) That's weird. But 
Word, you get bro. so <laughs> fucking weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> you get so much value out of just blind, sheer determination yep. that I think it outweighs the questionable pros of listening mm. to other people's judgment. Yeah. And I think it is rewarding in a sense that it pushes you to do better. Mm. But if you're going to do it, if you're going to listen to other people's judgment, take it into account and let that affect your everyday actions. Take it from people who actually you know for a fact yeah. mm-hmm. mean well, like mm-hmm. your parents, your... Your uh-huh. siblings, your people you actually admire close and people, mentors, their exactly people who have been through exactly what you've been through. People who you want to learn from their good stuff. You want to learn even more from their bad stuff, from mm-hmm. their failures and stuff. So those are the people you should take into consideration when considering judgment as a valid, not a random you know, comment result, on result. Facebook. Exactly, those mean nothing, man. It takes mm-hmm. three nah. seconds to, to fuck Some up. Some people day. are just literally waiting literally. for someone to do something That's so they, they can do. say something That's about it. Uh, it's three seconds of their day yeah. and it's a year on our mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Marco, something like that stays in your mind. Like I remember small anecdotes, whether positive mm. or negative, from years ago. And I'm sure that people online mm-hmm. are the same. Because mm-hmm. a message for you to type it takes two seconds. But the impact it has. But the impact it has. The you would never be able to conceptualize the impact that it has mm-hmm. on that person. And getting so many of them on a single post that you decided Lala. to put out, I could never deal with that. I mean, mm-hmm. Lala, celebrity status is, is overrated. It, <laughs> not, not for me. Huh? <laughs> I could never. But, Lala, uh, but I see why people would enjoy it. Uh, and would media, enjoy yeah. the fame. But mm-hmm. it's... Yeah. Dopamine. You need to be ready for it. Yeah. You need to be made for it. Because if mm-hmm. you're not, then it's... Yeah. We Can't should become. Have you ever considered becoming a monk? I'm not gonna lie, you have man. To, you have to fuck I've up the been, hair, man. Uh, uh, like <laughs> I, I've been the the most recent podcasts that I've been listening to and the most recent books I've been reading to it. Actually, funnily enough, I just lent a a, a book to my friend called The Idiot of of Fyodor Dostoevsky. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah, Dostoevsky. Um, and the idiot the actually idiot. refers to somebody who is oblivious, and because he is oblivious, then he is fulfilled and he is mm-hmm. happy. Ignorance so is bliss. Yep. Someone in Malta not listening to to the news because of the political situation. Yeah, they hire. Um, happy person yep. someone yeah. consuming himself getting worked up about yeah. it getting upset about it fucking power to Miserable. them they're the ones making the difference yes, yeah. but you'd be so much happier being the idiot yeah. definitely it takes a lot more effort to know something and suppress it and give it less importance than 100%. not know something at all and not even consider it in your day-to-day life so yeah for sure for sure but again word. social media is the key to all this it's the sure. it's the start and the end of it mm-hmm. people this whole judgment thing was not even the case Mm -hmm. a few decades ago. Of course, because in in, in Malta, you'd be judged by the few people at the time that there were around you. But nowadays, someone who lives in bloody yin now someone who lives in france someone who lives in malaysia can just up and talk shit yep. about you yeah. you know what i mean they yeah. see a video of you they see a post about you it's like ah you look dumb you're in malaysia exactly so so yeah i'm sure after this podcast someone will like comment on one of my photos it's like bella or on or on this podcast so what did you comment from like 2017 bella 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 like even right now, we're three people speaking our mind on, okay. on a podcast that, that, that is followed greatly by the entire like Gen Z demographic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are going to be some people that don't agree with us. Some people will be constructive about it and give us constructive mm-hmm. criticism. And others are going to say that I look weird or I'm a dumbass. <laughs> that, and, so yo, yo that, cringe. Ma, that's always the case. It, ma, it, that's it, always it, the it case. happens. So it's... You, you need to expect these things when you put yourself mm-hmm. out there. And, and, and like you said, you just set your mind up in such a way where, okay, the only opinion that matters to me is of those people that care about yeah. me. If you don't give a shit about me, if you haven't contributed one cent to my life, I do not give a fuck about what you think about me. You don't know what goes through my mind. You yeah. don't know what I'm doing. How the hell can you have an opinion on me? Michael. That is what brings me a, a lot of joy. But how do you even overcome that in the sense, yes, mindset is everything, but it also very much depends on the person. So say, mm. imagine I'm super insecure. I'm very scared of sort of going public with something. I, I do have my dreams. I do have my aspirations, but mm. Something is stopping me, and that is the fear of judgment. How do you get over that? Because it's easy to say, uh, just ignore it. Just but like, mm, fantastic. How, mm-hmm. If it's like ingrained in you already, what do you do to change it? It's easier mm. said than done. It's easier said than done. I mean, I, I feel like I've all, to an extent, I've always been this way, so I, I haven't had to do like a significant change in my 
person mm. to to get to not caring because mm-hmm. in a sense I've always done things for me and for the people that are close to me and people that I I consider like the, the opinion is valid like mm-hmm. you said but otherwise it hasn't been that change for me as for someone who has struggled with caring about other people's opinions and wants to change I can't give an informed uh, I like, think it very that, much but also depends on the people you surround yourself with. Yeah, for sure. I think you that to, has a big effect. If you have a problem, just whether it's a problem of self-image or mm-hmm. something, you have to, people can help. Because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. if your group of friends are all super judgmental, obviously yeah. you're not going to feel comfortable the friend group putting is something. Like like the people you surround yourself with. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I don't have to say that. I company not have to say that. They're not judgmental at all. They're all for my quirky, quirky ideas. I have mm. a couple that like put me in my place, but mm. but uh, for the most part, I have I have a good support system. You don't want a group of yes men. You want no, shit, no you do no, need a no, yes no. man like every now and then. No, but in <laughs> the sense, you need, you need a couple of yes men. Is what you need. Sometimes you need a cheerleader. Need a big like, G. I, I I have like three four friends. I <laughs> have big G. Yeah, I need like three or four friends. Well, I have three or four friends that each serve a different purpose, and it sounds mm-hmm. selfish, but we got together in a very organic way. Like it wasn't calculated from my end. But I know if I want like relationship advice I'm gonna go to one person Mm -hmm. if I want someone to tell me you're right bro I know who to go to if Mm -hmm. I want someone to put me in my place I know who to go to as well so it's important and I feel like those friends that put you in your place are very important and very underrated those those are the most important Mm -hmm. you're more likely to fall out with a yes man than than someone that because a yes man will go behind your back tell you yes go for it Um, or you're right in this argument and then tell the other person no you're right in this argument you're like bro what the you you double faced like that's true but I think what what you asked um, about kind of Previously, be previously caring so much about what people say, and then just shifting your perspective because it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a, a famous thing that I've heard before is always kind of not kind of always write down your problems, mm. write down mm-hmm. what's impacting you negatively, the ones that you can't control, Forget cross them off, and actually grab a pencil and mm-hmm. cross them off and put them to the side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The ones that you can do something about, circle them and work on them. But if the, the, the actual physical act of discarding shit that doesn't mean anything to mm-hmm. you is actually a great exercise. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it's going to take years for someone to get over that fear and anxiety, sure. but it's attainable. And you have to break it down into micro targets. Like if yes. your target is to be more confident and not care about people, what are the steps I have to mm-hmm. take in order to get to you that version of myself? You can't expect yourself to get over it It like won't this. happen in a day. Exactly. For sure. And that that's something Small that steps. relates to... It's not like something tangible, like, mm. you know, starting a podcast, for example. Well. It's something intrinsic within you. Mm-hmm. So I think the steps, you need to be a lot more careful, especially the people who you consult for, for help. You need mm. to be a lot more careful with who you choose, because like I said, mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. selective half now. Um, what would the steps be? Interessante. I think mm-hmm. self-reflection is always the first one. Like you have to be aware to what extent do I have this problem? Mm-hmm. What are the consequences of having this problem? And what would I be if I got over this problem? Mm-hmm. If I tackled this hurdle? How and many I think like what? And you can break every single one of those questions down. First of all, that applies to most problems that we yes. have. But specifically for that, you can break all of those questions down and, like I said, set challenges for yourself. Whether it's, if the question is confidence, go out and speak to a random stranger that you've never met and yeah. do it a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And take notes of all the positives, mm-hmm. take notes of all the negatives get a job in sales man mm-hmm. or move like move countries spend time mm-hmm. with new people like that's the problem again back you to just need to take that mm-hmm. leap. take that leap to di- a difference from the status quo mm-hmm. mm. if you're used to the landscape that is Malta and all that it has with it you're in a sense programmed to be the output of that same landscape mm-hmm. so the moment that you take yourself out of it you're open to new ideas open to new Opportunities for growth, like you spent some time abroad, you were in Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. How did that affect you, for example? Oh man, I felt like I had a fresh start yeah. wherever I was. No yeah. one knew shit about me. I could be anyone I wanted to be. It's were such you, a were you Pedro? Fresh like, did you get a new uh, identity or something? <laughs> I, did, I didn't have the moustache yet, so I wasn't quite. Oh, right, I see, I see. Yeah, but I, I did choose not to speak English too well when I didn't want to converse with someone. Yes. <laughs> that was a cool little okay. hack I had. Nice. 
Um, but, but, I, no hablo inglés. Yeah, exactly. No hablo inglés. But it's 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 a shame because the part I went, I, what attracted me about the the hotel I went to work at, which is the Glen Eagles Hotel, because right. that was in the Highlands of Scotland. So I'm, I'm like, a bar is shut. Uh, yes, <laughs> Glen Eagles <laughs> as well. Glen Eagles not quite five red star, yeah, but yeah. it's something. Six man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, what attracted me about it was that I was going to go somewhere in the Highlands in Scotland where no one gives a fuck mm-hmm. and I could be anyone I wanted to be. You read that on an article in the uh, Highlands, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> and you're like, I'm there, exactly, exactly. I'm going. Everyone just wants survival. <laughs> so, um, but I actually ended up like, so we used to live in the staff accommodation at the hotel that was full of 20 something year olds, mm-hmm. all very competitive on the job mm. and all fucking around together. Like, so mm-hmm. I ended up finding myself in, in an even more Maltesified Malta because right. huh? everyone's <laughs> passing yeah, even yeah. more judgment. Yeah. So, so over time I fell victim to it's caring still. a lot. But for those first two months, Jesus, I was, uh, I was free. You both lived abroad as well, no? Yeah. Uh-huh. I've lived abroad for six months, so shaita by me now, but it's yeah. Those six months had their had their effect. It's a large difference. I'm just going somewhere and you don't know anyone. That's such a breath of fresh air. Oh, half no, half no, I'm I'm a bit tired of going to the same party, seeing the same people. It's just like, ugh, uh-huh. all right, they are only stairs. I'd love to experience that again and go yeah. abroad for a few months again. Yeah. Sure. No, it's it's where's really next for you? I'll see. Oh, I'm not sure yet. Mm. Um, um, me, uh, me, I'm, I'm in love with Italy, and, and I think I go to Italy three, four times a year. Most of the times yes. it's Milano to watch my boys AC Milan. Love Shout you guys. Out. What, Shout out AC Milan. What a start! What a start to the season. The plug you will podcast. I'll pay the sponsorship <laughs> right, for right, that. Right, right. <laughs> cool. But how does boys? We'll we'll hit the target with this one. <laughs> <laughs> But but I do yeah. I do really I'm really fascinated about um, the world spins fast but some people yeah. move slow and I think Dol- the Italian 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 Italian. Dolce Ooh. fucking fine. Sometimes Italian. I get like videos of, of an old man in a speedo laying on the beach with the, with the waves crashing right that's, here. Man. That's that's <laughs> it's like this dude is living that my is, life. That like, is he's <laughs> living Dolce Italian. The Who's guy that? felt like a breeze yeah. between his legs as he out. went out there. I think and got crashed a wave. <laughs> <between> <laughs> Yeah, like level up, duck six star. You want to level up? Yeah. Um, but yes, Italy, man. Italy is nice. Yeah, Italy is nice. nice. Italy is Italy good. Is well, what about yourself? Um, I think next for me is the Netherlands. Oof. Oh, I'd love uh, to. The Netherlands is, is amazing. One way ticket, yeah, come on. It's indefinite. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't not to say that I'm not coming back, but uh-huh. I don't. Well, plan just for a few back, months. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, just for a few months, not more than a year. Definitely, uh-huh. but not less you, than six months. You get answers, bro. When when you go away yeah, for a for while, sure. you get mm-hmm. you get answers. Sure. Like when I was when I was um, moving to Scotland for that one year, um, I went up there with my problems. I remember I had a girlfriend at the time, and I was gonna do long distance. Right. This is my ex. Um, so that that was like a hurdle that I had to overcome, kind of to decide to do it. I'm like, no, I'm yeah. gonna stay in Malta because comfortable. Um, but but through her pushing me, me pushing yeah. myself, like I, I I ended up going up. And you get answers from that shit because you're up there. You don't have a right hand man to give you the answers. You don't sure. have someone guiding you. It's just you, you figure it out. Just you and that new version of you, which exactly. is equally powerful. Like exactly. For me, it was the same when I when I went uh, up to the US. Mm. I got uh, I was in like an exchange program it's called ISEP through oh, university, cool. mm-hmm. and I was in uh, North Carolina, in mm. Charlotte, and for me it was the same. It was a fresh start. It was like I get to meet new people mm. and have conversations without any prejudice whatsoever mm-hmm. because first of all I'm in love with that feeling of meeting someone new and having those you start to gauge what who they are as a person mm-hmm. and yeah. I feel I'm, I'm empathetic enough to know more or less who you are within the first couple of sentences and I'm obsessed with that like getting mm-hmm. to know new people of course then once you reach that that stage where you know them a bit better it's still very but valuable still, uh, getting yeah. to know still someone valuable, from but, but the people element was was insanely powerful for me and even yeah. getting to know someone knowing yeah. that they know nothing about you but they know mm. so much about so many other things that you have no yes, idea yes yes exactly. yes that's why so it's so beautiful because over here in a sense since i know people might recognize me from three hours sometimes even if i meet someone new i'm like all right yeah. and what i has boek who is like tight yeah. they they've seen that and they, mm. they think this whereas so, if you were to be somewhere else and it happened to come up in conversation that you did what you do, mm-hmm. you would get a much more genuine reaction mm-hmm. on the first try rather yep. than someone who's seen all of your stuff. Uh-huh. I feel like it would be more genuine. Because mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's not a reactionary comment. 
but but it's a a, a new comment, you know. It's a new one. That's, that's exactly. The that's the thing. It's a new, that's fresh one. But we're we're getting close to the ending end. ending this cool. this episode. Um, you spoke brilliantly, and I just really want you um uh, to kind of share an anecdote or or share a word of advice to anyone who really cares so much about what people are thinking about mm -hmm. them to the point that it's limiting their potential because yeah, it's like this plague the sickness that infects people mm -hmm. man they feel like they yeah. they could use all the wisdom or help that right. they can get well, my wisdom is limited but <laughs> um, i think it's always going to be the, the case mm -hmm. so people are going to judge regardless whether it's a hundred years ago in a smaller level or a thousand years in the future to a larger maybe we're dead by then who knows mm. but just do it man as in whatever mm -hmm. is going to happen is going to happen whether you do it or not like yeah. you are the only person that's responsible for the outcome that is your life i mean th that's truly it i think what we have that's definitely a pro that i don't think we've touched on too much that gets commonly overlooked as a country I've heard people say that the best thing about Malta is the fact that it's a, a small place. Yeah. And I've heard people say that the worst thing about Malta is the fact that yep. it's a small place. I think that there are countless opportunities for growth, purely because you can grasp them much faster, much closer. You have mm. accessibility to everything. Mm. You have access to people, you have access to places, you have access to things, you have access to opportunities again. So make places, use of that. first of all, it's ridiculously underrated how yeah. fast we can get to a beach. Yeah, oh, people have to I travel about to hours say, to go to like, like you're always five minutes away from a, a cheeky less, dip whenever you less. want like as, that. as for people like i said the people that are seen elsewhere as unattainable whether they're celebrities or business people or mm. advisors or people who can actually help you you could run into them at Lidl, man yeah <laughs> like it's it's so easy to run into these mm -hmm. people and once you have access to them access in the sense you know them or you get to speak to mm -hmm. them even if you run run into them at the door you have access to their skills yeah because yep. If you're able to build a network and if you're not too judgmental or if you're not too worried about what people might think and you have the confidence to get to know that person and ask for help, mm. you will get ridiculous amounts of help. Mm. Yeah. You will not and get networking anywhere else. is easier like that. It mm. gets easier with the confidence and with practice, check, of course. But I think the, the opportunities that we have as a result of us being we a small community, we take them for granted. Mm -hmm. We take them highly for granted. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So mm. we ended that on a good note. Yeah. Fucking word, bro. I think so. Fucking <laughs> word. <bro. laughs> <laughs> 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 cool. Nice. You that was fun. You were so easy.